Those of you who have heard my video blogs before have probably heard me talk about the principle of hierarchy. Now, what this principle refers to is the fact that knowledge must be taught in necessary order if it's going to be sincerely, genuinely, independently understood by the child. And that order is proceeding from the most directly observable, the simplest, the most concrete, to integrations of those simple observations to greater and greater levels of abstraction. Now this hierarchy, this necessary order, is usually respected in a subject like math. Teachers understand that you have to start with arithmetic before you can then proceed to something like algebra, before you can then proceed to something like calculus. So the hierarchy in the subject of math is almost inescapable, though some have found clever ways to escape it. So, but it's in other subjects like science that hierarchy is often grossly violated. The, an elementary school textbook, for example, will often start with something like the model of an atom. The kids will learn that this is the shape of an atom, here's the nucleus, here are the protons, here are the electrons, and they'll memorize that structure. But the thing is, they're doing nothing more than memorizing. The atom is something that was discovered very late in the history of science. And it was discovered late in history because it was the consequence of a long chain of abstract reasoning. It is not something that is directly observable. So if the children haven't been guided along that um, process of uh, abstraction, then the thing that they're being told about really means very little to them. It doesn't come out of observations. It doesn't explain phenomena of science. It doesn't have any connection to anything they know. It's just something out of the blue that's memorized. Now, in this year for, at our school, we're studying life science. Our, our science program is on a three-year cycle of life science, earth science, and physical science. And this principle of hierarchy explains why, in a typical life science textbook, what you'll see in chapter one is a discussion of the cell. Whereas here at Van Damme Academy, what, you ex what the kids experience on the first day is a discussion of the chicken foot. Now, I'll come back to that chicken foot in a minute, but let me explain the difference. So a biology textbook might start with a discussion of the cell because it's small. So small is confused with simple, or it's one of the basic building blocks of biology. But again, a cell is something that was developed, discovered late in history, and it's something that is not by any means directly observable by the child, directly observable through a microscope, but not part of his day-to-day -day existence. The goal of a science program is to give order and intelligibility to the world around the child. It's to help him see that there are certain principles that are govern governing the physical world. So what you want to do is start with the world immediately around him. Start with the things that are directly accessible to, to him and start with the concepts that are accessible to him so that he's understanding something in a meaningful and enlightening way. So Dr. Krieger, our science teacher, will start the life science year with something that's very directly observable to the child, his hand. And what he does is just start having them explore the hand, feeling it. Now the hand, you can with the hand you can feel the bones inside of it. You can feel and see the tendons on the hand. And it's not a complex mechanical operation. It's easy to explain how the movement of the fingers works mechanically. So Dr. Krieger will have them explore the hand, will explain the relationship between the tendons and the bones, and then demonstrate it with the chicken foot. So you can get these at any Asian grocery store and have the butcher cut them so that the tendons are hanging out the end. So what he'll demonstrate to the kids after they've explored their own hand is that when you pull on the tendons here, the fingers of the hand move. He then, in a later class, has them construct their own model of a finger. So here's a finger made out of popsicle sticks, straws, tape, and a piece of yarn. And the popsicle stick is divided into sections like joints, and the uh, yarn is connected like a tendon to the popsicle stick. So when you pull on it, just like in the finger, the the just like in the chicken foot, the finger moves. Now, 
when Dr. Krieger has done this before, in previous years, I've noticed kids leaving school in the afternoon looking at their hands like this. Because this lesson that they've learned makes something that they observe every day suddenly fascinating and intelligible to them. They know mechanically how this works. And that is a little model for how a science curriculum must always proceed. It needs to be something that offers explanation and intelligibility to their daily experience, and then from there builds to the more abstract. That's the way to teach science.